AGRT here and welcome back to another video. This video will be covering port forwarding and this is my last and final way to actually make sure that you are always playing on an open NAT type. I've discussed why open NAT type is important and open NAT type just makes sure that you play your game in your console and it could also be your PC the way that the game was intended to be played and that was that is without any kind of problems when it comes to ports not incoming packets things like that and in this video it's going to be port forwarding the last two videos i've covered is reserve an ip address with dmz and creating a static ip address in your ps4 or for your ps4 uh, for dmz now port forwarding is very similar the difference is you're actually inputting all the specific ports that are needed for a specific game. Now, in my in my previous videos, like I mentioned before, you can either reserve an IP address or create a static IP address, and it's the same for the port forwarding situation. If it was me and I had to port forward because my router doesn't have a DMZ, I would go ahead and reserve an IP address that I have done in my very first video. I'll leave a link in the description below if you choose to reserve your IP address. To me, it's a lot easier because you just do everything inside the router and then you just go to your PS4 and you hit easy when setting up your network rather than going in and putting all the numbers. But in the method I'm gonna show you today, I'm just gonna create a static IP address. It, is, it isn't that bad, but if you unplug your system or you accidentally hit a different network uh, configuration mode, it will reset all the numbers you input into your PS4. Again, this is the port forwarding video, and this is how to create an open app type. All right, so the first thing you really need to do is open up a web browser. It could be Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, whatever browser that you prefer. Go up to the address bar and type in portforward.com. Now it's gonna take you to this website this site is actually where you're going to be instructed to do everything. In fact, you really don't need to actually watch the video at this point. You can go through and find all the instructions on this website, the ports, your game, uh, router information, what you need to do on your PS4 or Xbox One. It could be for either one. It could for, be for PC, Wii, Wii U, whatever it is. This, this website's really good and the instructions are phenomenal. But I'll go ahead and show you anyway. Now, what you want to do is go down to games on the left hand column and go to how to port forward games. On this page, you can either just go ahead and look up the ports if you already know how to create a static IP address by clicking on list of all known ports and applications, scroll down, find your game, you're good. But if you don't know how to create or go into your router settings or create a static IP address in the PlayStation 4, you just continue down, find your game in the list. In this case, it's Infinite Warfare. It says Xbox One, PlayStation 4, or PC. I'm on PlayStation 4, so I'll be clicking on PlayStation 4. On this web page, you're going to have to click on your manufacturer that's made your router. Mine, I'm using Netgear at the moment, so I'm going to hit N. It's going to go down to the ends. I'm going to hit Netgear. On here is asking for your model. What model is your router? It either goes by, you know, what type of brand name it is, like AC1900 Nighthawk, or in my case, it's using the actual model, which is the Nighthawk R7000. So I gotta scroll down, find not Nighthawk R7000, click on it, and then you get onto this webpage. All right, when you get onto this page, this is where everything happens. Everything happens on this page. It shows you how to port forward all your ports on your router. Step one, it's gonna ask you, do you know how to create a static IP address on your console or PC? If you do not, you click on this link here, static IP address, and scroll down to whatever um, console you have. You click on it, it's going to show you how to port forward on that console. I'm going to go ahead and show you anyway on a PlayStation 4, but if you have an Xbox One, you click on Xbox One. If you have a Nintendo Wii, you click on Nintendo Wii. Same with Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. I'm going to hit back. It takes me back to step one. Step two, 
you need to log in to your router. Okay, so now I'm in my router settings. If you're having any problems trying to get, find your IP address for your router, or you can't get into your router because you don't know your username or password, then don't fret, Port Forward has you covered. If you don't know your router's IP address, you click on how to find your router's IP address. It's going to give you a whole guide on how to do it. If you scroll down, it's going to also tell you how to find your credentials if you didn't change your username or password. And it will even tell you how to reset your router if you do not know what you changed your username and password to. So as we scroll down, it's going to ask us to go to advanced then it's going to go to have us go down to advanced setup, port forwarding, port triggering. Now it's showing us a similar page to what they have on their web page. Here is where you will actually be inputting your information as far as your port forwarding ports. As you can tell, I've already done this for when Black Ops 3 was out. These were the ports for Black Ops 3. Usually the, the ports that are very similar for each game is 80, 443, and 1935. So those should be the same. Here it's slightly different than what they have on their web page for Infinite Warfare, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and get into the setup now for creating each section for ports. Okay, before we go any further, it's going to have us generate a static IP address for your console or what your IP address will be when you input the static IP address inside your console on port forwarding. This is step four. It's going to ask you the application, which of course is Infinite Warfare. Now this right here, IP address, is the IP address that you will create on your PlayStation 4. In my case, my IP address that I will create for my PlayStation 4 will be 192.168.0.150. If you do not know how to create a static IP address, please refer to other parts of this video, earlier parts, because they actually have instructions on how to create a static IP address. So after you've inputted whatever IP address that you want your PlayStation 4 to be, or Xbox One, whatever it might be, just scroll down and they as you can see here internal IP address they have already generated the IP address for each little example window that you must follow in order to create all your ports in this case there's only five ports we're gonna have to input I'm not gonna go through each one but I will show you how to do at least one of these as you can see at the bottom here, it says 3074 and 3478. I have already done this. Now, pay really close attention to your internal starting port and internal ending port, port because sometimes they are not the same. As you can see in the last part, it says 3478 and 3480. That's exactly what I have already done. I went to 3478 to 3480. I just put a dash between there that's how they do it if you have a dash between the ports that means all the ports between 3478 and 3480, 3480 will be open so just pay particular attention to these to make sure that you match everything that they have on their example page so in order for me to get to this page I have to add custom service Now it looks very similar to their page, except for mine I had an update so my layout's slightly different than theirs, but you kind of get the gist of it. I'm going to go ahead and type in for service name PS4 one, you can put uh, anything you'd like. It could be Xbox One, one, Xbox One, two, Xbox One, three, or Wii, Wii U one so on the next part is creating the protocol sometimes it's just tcp other times it's just UT udp but in this case it's both so i'm going to click on both the external port range the first one here is going to be 80 so i'm going to type in 80 
Use the same port range for internal port? Yes, because of course they have the same information. The internal IP address, you just copy what they have there. So it's 150, that's your console. Then you're gonna hit apply. Then you hit, after you hit apply, of course I've already done it, so it says port conflict with other service. So I'll just hit back. Let's just say for demonstrative purposes that it did update, it's gonna send you back to this page. And as you can see here, it did update because I've already had it done. For the next port, you hit add custom service again. And then you just input the next field, which is 443. Again, you just make sure that the service name is slightly different. Go PS42, type in uh, the protocol, the external and internal port ranges, which they're going to be the same for that as well. The only time it's different is when I scroll down to the bottom, I'm going to have to uncheck this. I will have to write 3478 here and then 3480 there. And of course you fill out all your other information as well, your console and your service name. Again, I'm not going to go through each one of these, it's just demonstrative purposes. After you've hit and you've actually inputted all of your ports, you're going to hit apply. I'm going to hit cancel because I've already done this. And then you're just going to go ahead and log out. After you've applied all of your ports, you're just going to log out and then you're going to go to your PlayStation 4 and finish up there. So let's go ahead and head over to the PS4. Okay, so now we are in our PlayStation 4 and you just need to go over to your settings. Now remember, if you have an Xbox One, you do the same thing. They have instructions on how to create a static IP address on their website. I'm just showing you this to give a demonstration. Mine is PlayStation 4, so I went over to settings, go down to network, set up internet connection. I'm gonna use a LAN cable, so I'm just gonna hit LAN. Here, I'm gonna hit custom. You gotta go down to manual. Now, if you reserved your IP address, you don't have to go through all this setup. Uh, this is creating a static IP address. If you reserved your IP address, again, you don't go through all of this setup. You just go ahead and you hit easy and it'll be all generated for you. But in our case, we're creating a static IP address. So an IP address, that is your console. You just type in 192.168.0.150. Now remember, this IP address is the same IP address that you inputted when you did your ports when it asked you for an IP address. That's exactly what this is. This is the same IP address that you inputted for the ports. The subnet mask should still be 255.255.255.0. The default gateway is your router, whatever your IP, router's IP address is. Mine is 192.168.0.1. The primary DNS will also be your router. So I'd put 192.168.0.1. Secondary dairy DNS, I'm not gonna do anything with that because my router is gonna do everything. I'm gonna hit next. Automatic MTU settings, do not use proxy server, test internet connection. Again, connection speed will vary. Okay, we're pretty much done. Now we're gonna go into Infinite Warfare and see if it worked. Now, if for any reason that NAT type failed, all you really have to do is just make sure that all of your IP addresses are the same. All right, so our NAT type is open. So we're good to go. Again, I don't recommend port forwarding because for whatever reason, sometimes the ports kind of show a false open for a NAT type and you might actually be um, having some kind of conflicts with the network even though it's showing open. I prefer DMZ because everything is open regardless. I've had instances where port forwarding had failed but yet it still said NAT type open and I'm having issues. So what I had to do was again, put it inside of DMZ and all of my issues were gone. If at any time your NAT type fails during the testing process, please look 
at your IP addresses to make sure everything is matching to what that router or console is. Otherwise, you will get that NAT type failed. Well, that's it for port forwarding. Hopefully, this actually helps some of you guys out that dude cannot do a DMZ or just didn't want to do a DMZ. Port forwarding is quite simple. It's really easy to do. And just make sure you get all your IP address numbers correct. Anyway, this is JRT, and I'll see you guys next time.